Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. We're going to talk today about a few titles that, for want of a better word, fall under the classification of what I like to call filler books. The purpose of a filler book, I, I just don't get. Now, you know, I know I said at the beginning of this project, what, two years ago now, as I warned then, I am a slow reader. And I'll tell you the truth, honestly, the, the biggest reason that this section has taken so long to come out is uh, the central two books here that I'm not skipping. Uh, the one that I'm skipping is Queen of the Depths by Richard Lee Byers. I tried reading this, and I just, you know, I got like 40 pages in, and stuff was happening, and it was slightly intriguing. It's like this guy is forced to be part of... Uh, Oh, man, I don't remember what it was now. I don't think it was the Hog ones, but it was some sort of undersea empire. He was forced to, like, serve them because some priestess there thought that he was part of a prophecy or whatever. But it just, but I just realized after, like, 40 pages or so, man, I just don't care about how anything turns out here. Like, it just doesn't matter to me in the slightest. And so it could, in its own way, be considered a filler book as well, I guess. But... I uh, I didn't I didn't read the whole thing, so we're not going to discuss that in any depth. No pun intended. What we will talk about, and I'll just kind of throw one cover up and then the other because uh, I'm going to bounce between the two a lot, is book two of You're the Rogue Dragons, again by Richard Lee Byers. He is just all over uh, the realms from here on out. And that is the right. Also, book three of The Scions of Erebar. And that's the Emerald Scepter. That's by Thomas M. Reed. So, you have a lot of different reasons for a filler book. I mean, you know, a lot of people have ragged on Jordan for having, a, a Robert Jordan, essentially for having entire books that are just set up for the next book. I don't think that's the case. I think he got a little out of hand and books should have been combined. But that's a different topic for a different day. Point being, when I'm talking here about... Are, are books that just things happen in. You know, it's not just people sitting around talking and nothing happens. I mean, there are events and things happen, and you can say, okay, well, in this book, da 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 da, -da took place. And it's not necessarily that they're written badly. Um, both Byers and Reed are competent writers. But I just found myself over and over and over again asking, why should I care? Why should I care? And, you know, I, I get sick and tired of all these people who are like, do you even like the realms and blah, 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 blah. I would think the fact that I've taken on this project and the fact that I've stuck with it and the fact that I've given what I think are some pretty interesting reviews on some of the books and uh, and, and brought some uh, new people into the fold or brought some people back. I mean, even if it's a few, that's that's something, right? I think that proves, you know, I'm I'm interested in the realms, but... That's not just a catch-all to say you can throw out anything and I'm immediately going to be excited by it. The cover might catch my eye almost, <laughs> you know, uh, since 3rd edition started. I pretty much like all of the covers. But, you know, and, and I'll go ahead and say, first of all, I, I liked Wright a lot more than I liked the Science of Erebar wrap-up. Here's my issue with these books. Um, and, sorry, I'm circling around things here because I don't have a ton of specific points, so I just kind of keep going to these general ideas. You know, I said at the beginning of this project that I started the sentence like three times. I'm going to finish it, damn it. I said at the beginning of this project that no matter how filler a book might seem or no matter how much you might want to write it off, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time to put together a novel, even, you know, a 300-page one. So, I was going to give people kind of the benefit of the doubt, uh, so on and so forth, and, and, and admire that in people. But I just don't get why you would write a book with so little passion in it. You know, uh, the right, as I said, I enjoyed more, but I'm so frustrated because at the end of The Rage, we got this really intriguing look into the mind of Samister, the guy who's kind of behind all of the uh, nonsense that's going on. And I thought, okay, this is... Yeah, you know, this is a lead-in. Like, book two is gonna, you know, book two is always mostly filler out of a trilogy, but I was like, book two is maybe gonna be a lead-in to, like, viewing his pathology, and we're gonna find out what's going on there. But no, we get maybe a chapter or two from his point of view, but it's nothing but just plot happening, basically. You know, I mean, he, 
I, I wouldn't say he's so bad as a pencil mustache twirling villain, but he's, he's just not very interesting. Now, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have anything interesting to do in book two, and I really hope that more of book three will delve into his background. You know, Pavel and Will, I still like them. I'm still intrigued by the Dorn. Uh, uh, Kira, I think her name is, Romance. There's an oddly named <laughs> dragon in here, Malazan, uh, which made me wonder, is Byers a fan of the Malazan series? Was it just a weird, happy coincidence? Did he just happen to see the book on the stands and think, that's a cool-sounding name, I'm going to throw that in as a nod. I don't know. The, there are a lot of things that happen in this book. There's one scene that I actually really liked, and that was the scene, if, if you've read it, you'll know what I mean, and if you haven't, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's a scene in which you really, really think things are being advanced a hell of a lot in the Kira Doran relationship, and it just turns so creepy. I really like that scene, but that comes early on, and just nothing else really lived up to that. It's like a lot of people fight a lot of dragons. That's really... I, I mean, I guess I kind of figured going into it, that's mostly what this series is going to be, you know? But I didn't think there would be so much of it, and it's like the Tegan Jivex subplot in here. Oh, man, I really like those characters, and it was just so dull, and I, I could not believe that it went on the entire book. I'm still at least mildly curious about book three there, but I'm really disheartened by the fact that, like, for instance, Chitulio, uh, who's a character who I enjoyed overall, dies in this book, and it just, I felt nothing, you know? It's like the death is just so perfunctory and so dispassionately written that I, I was really surprised. I mean, I just felt nothing. An even worse offender in this arena is Emerald Scepter by... Thomas M. Reed. I really, really enjoyed the first book of Science of Erebar, and that is the only reason that I slogged through this sucker. This one just, oh man, I think I took a two or three week break after this, and, and uh, or in the middle of this, and I don't know, probably multiple ones of those if you look at the time dates on uh, when I actually recorded the last one, you know, and, and I don't know if it's because this is coming on the heels of the Erebus Kale trilogy winding up, which was just so good, and and so everything's kind of falling low by the wayside or what. I've, I've read, like, maybe a dozen books on the side while trying to make through these two. I usually read two Realms books at once, and they usually end up being paired together for these reviews. But these just, I, you know, I just could not find it in myself to go back to them. Instead, I started reading other stuff and being like, oh, hey, you know, um, I... I actually even read, like, some 19th century Russian literature, which felt like it moved faster. It just, it's, I don't know, it's so frustrating, uh, especially with Reed, that the story that I'm invested in somewhat just has wheels spinning, you know? I mean, the Reed wrap-up to this trilogy just was like, we're gonna mess with M some more, and the villain is, like, it's... I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain this idea. Like, it's a twist, and I didn't necessarily see the twist coming, but it wasn't shocking at all. It was just kind of like, eh, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. Who cares? It, it it just, it was so uninteresting, and just lots and lots and lots of stuff happened here. You know what Emerald Scepter kind of reminded me of? It felt almost like somebody transcribed a really really boring D&D session, and then threw in a rape scene. I, I mean, that's kind of what it felt like. It was just so pedantic in its movements. It, it just, it, it, you know, if that one priest dude turned into smoke one more damn time, and the friggin' zombie plague, how dull and un, uninteresting, just unintriguing, you know, nothing about it intrigued me. I thought the, uh, like, ape priest might be kind of interesting, but he never really went anywhere, and it was like, oh, you know, this leads to a sunken city, which leads to this, which leads to that, which again, as I say, kind of reminds me of, like, a really dull session. But it just, none of it had any weight. So I just felt bored the entire time, and I can't tell you what changes were wrought in the city, because I know that, like, a priest changed, and blah, 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 and I think Grandma buzzkill or whatever finally died, but it just, I, you know, there was nothing in there that caught my interest or my attention for any length of time, and so I, I guess here's the thing. 
when you're writing like these stories of daring do and adventure and heroism you have to be somewhat excited by it yourself right i i would think that you would have to be so how does that translate so poorly onto the page to a reader and again as i say neither of these writers are bad writers you know uh they both Byers especially is a little more straightforward than I care for, but I, I can still enjoy straightforward. He repeats things a little too much. Um, there are clunky phrases, etc., 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 but he's, he, he's, he's got good workmanship. Reed, I think, has a, a little better flair, but not so hot in plotting. And I guess I just think, you know, I don't understand how you can sit there for weeks and pound out something, go through multiple revisions, I assume, and just, you know, just kind of be like, meh, that'll do. I mean, that's kind of the feeling that I got from both of these books, is that the authors felt like, eh, that'll do. And that's a really frustrating place to be. I'll be curious to see how the third book of uh, Year of the Rogue Dragons turns out, because I really want to like Byers now, because I have liked a couple of his things, and there's so much of them that I really, really want to hope that he's going to pull a rabbit out of his hat, that he was maybe just a little overtaxed as he wrote book two, because I think he wrote like 19 books that year for the realms. We'll see. Reed, I, I don't know what the hell happened there. I really enjoyed the first one, and I've enjoyed uh, one or two other books that I've read by Reed. So I will be curious to see. I don't even know if he has anything else for the realms at this point, but, you know, whatever. Uh, at least we're done with that series now. Next time, I don't know if we will finish out Year of the Rogue Dragons or if I'm going to shoot over and go ahead and start diving into the House of Serpents trilogy. If I read one for each of the remaining ones in this pack of five, then I get through it. So I might do that. We'll see. One way or the other. We'll, we'll figure something out here. Just knee-deep in trilogies at this point, trying to climb our way out of them uh, in a way that makes sense. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.